Hi folks, Dave here and uh, just to have us a quick video showing you uh, some of the preparations that you have to do if you want to take your boat out. So for me, uh, there's a series of checks. Uh, this is a motorboat so it's ever so slightly different from a sailboat. Um, but the, fir the first thing, the safety side of things is the same for all boats. So first up, check that you've got a, a flare pack that's suitable for where you're going. This is a big offshore flare pack. I don't know if you can see, it's an offshore one. And it has all these flares in there so all you have to do just check with these all in date now i know these are but if you can see they all have on them expiry date so we're good until december next year and that's a parachute flare that one um got a little handheld handheld uh, flare now and again look for the expiry date 20 you know 12th of next year so all my flares in my shore pack good put the lid on that holds it nice and tight and dry and will allow it to float um, God. Yeah. so yeah get the lid on nice and tight um, that will keep everything dry inside and it will like to float if you go down next thing is how many of you are there so in this case was only me but normally there would be two of us um, so check how many life jackets you've got so I have four life jackets here and these are all brand new so I know we're fine but you have to do yearly maintenance on the life jackets to check that the um, valves and release mechanisms are all okay they're brand new so I don't need to check them but got four automatic life jackets there Next thing we need to do, make sure we've got a fully functioning VHF radio. This one's a handheld. Um, and you know, turn it on. You can see that we've, we've got signal and you know, it's picked a channel, so radio. So that's it for kind of the basics. Um, the next stuff we have to do is engine checks. So on this boat, the engines are down here. I'll move my fat fender. So engines are under here. And what checks do we have to do down here? Well, um, first things first, you want to be checking the strainers. So I'm gonna get my ass down here. Less than graceful climb down. So these are our raw water strainers. You want to take that cap off. You want to check inside, check the filter. There's a little strainer basket inside. So take the top off and here we can see our little basket and we can see but in our case you know that's the raw water feed in the water has to go through this basket down into Nathan you can see we've got a few shrimp stuck in there but nothing major so I'm not going to bother cleaning those shrimp out they can stay they're not going to harm anything um, just sat in the basket um, next time we go out after it's had another big run I'll probably um, empty it out and clean that out the next thing I do is take the oil cap off, have a good look in, good look at that, make sure that the oil is clean and clear and that we're not getting mayonnaise. Uh, mayonnaise is what you get when you get coolant mixed with water, so that's usually a head gasket gone. So just check that, make sure that's fine, in our case it is, nice and clear and black. Need to change him, but it's clear. Uh, the next thing you do is an oil check, pull your dipstick out, check your oil level. I'm not going to do that one handed because it's going to get everywhere. Uh, and then the final check that I like to do is check my coolant. Now I know that this engine in particular, this is my starboard engine, I know that this engine's got a coolant leak. So when I look down in there, I can see that that's well below my minimum level for coolant. So I need to put coolant in. And that green stuff down there, that's the coolant that keeps leaking out of it. So before I go anywhere, I need to feed it with some coolant. But that's the extent of my engine checks. Um, I don't need to check any of the air filters or anything like that because they've, they've all been done. Um, and yeah, it's the same on both sides. Water, engine oil, engine oil and strainer again. 
Right, so that's the basic safety and engine checks. Uh, what now? So now depends on if you're going out at night or not for me. So at this stage now, I would turn on all my nav lights if we were going out at night. And I would check all my nav lights actually work and light up and, you know, all nice and stable. So apart from that, we're now ready to um, get going. So we come off the boat for starters. And what I would do is I would disconnect my mains power from the socket here. Always disconnect from the socket from the pontoon side, not the boat side. Someone once told me you disconnect it from the boat side so that it doesn't dish turn itself off. Well, if you do that and it doesn't turn itself off, what you've got is a, a live socket connection that lives in there, sat on here on the pontoon for anyone to reach. That's got 240 mains going through it, which is really stupid. So always disconnect from the pontoon. Take this line off here, this stern line. And then that leaves us with these three lines on this side. So we've got a stern line, we've got a bow line, and we've got this one coming up here. This is our spring line. So now what I would do is I would take my spring line off. And I would lay it along there, along the length of the deck, and take it off all the way across. So that the only thing holding me on is my bow line at the very front up there, and my stern line at the very back there. I would then go in, get my engine started, get all ready once I'm ready for casting off step off the boat pull my bow line in and take my bow line off and as you do that um, so as you take that off you'd pull the boat towards you just grab onto the rail just give it a tug so that the boat doesn't pull away from you so that it stays close to the pontoon it also gives you a handy handle to hold on to and walk along the back again just holding on to the boat all the way across so it doesn't go anywhere i'll just slip my stern line here chuck it on the deck and then the boat is just sat there floating free step on don't push the boat when you step back on when it's floating free step on and transfer your weight immediately onto your front foot you're on the boat now you're holding free i come into here for having my engines on and uh, that's it my little throttles and i would be away i would be loose um as i say i'm not doing it because i'm not actually going anywhere yet but that's kind of the order and the basic tasks that I do every time I um, I go anywhere. Now there's other more major maintenance and checks you would do on a on a less frequent basis, but you know if you're just going out for an hour or two, that's sufficient. Um, the very final thing that you want to do though, and I will show you this because you will forget fuel shut offs. So when you leave the boat, you will always shut your fuel off. Always turn your isolators off. Make sure you turn them on before you get anywhere because there's a certain amount of fuel in the lines so the boat will start and it will run for maybe two three minutes depends on how big your lines are and then all of a sudden the engine will cut out and if you're floating free on a windy day in the marina with no engines you're going to hit something so always check when you've got your fuel isos turned on and the same goes for your battery isos um but yeah apart from that that's it really simple particularly on a small boat like this and uh yeah, hope that gives you a bit of an insight into what we have to do before we go out and uh, have fun on the water. So stay safe and I'll see you all later. Bye bye.